Yes, indeed. Welcome to the show. Thanks for watching Lancaster Connects, the show about the battle on Main Street, big versus small, David versus Goliath. We are happy to bring you the very best of what makes Lancaster so great. And uh, we love having you here. We've already got some people that were commenting. We love that. Not even live in their I know, chat or, away. I guess that kind hey, of means Paul. we're kind of a big deal. Kind What's up, deal. Paul? Yep. So uh, comment. Uh, commenting is how you get entered to win our prize. We do prizes here on the show. Uh, what do we got this week? $25 restaurant gift card That's to right. a local Lancaster restaurant. That's right. We've got a bunch of them. It's not just one restaurant. Yeah, you get to pick. You get, get to pick your, your, your... There's a a bevy of uh, <laughs> gift cards in the bowl of gift cards. Yeah. I was going to say it was a bowl of gift cards, but yeah, you said a yes. bevy in a bowl. So yes. I guess, yeah. Yep. You have a bevy those. in a bowl. So comment, love the show, right? Don't Art. just hit the like. Likes are for loot. Not losers. <laughs> no one's a loser. Sorry. <laughs> we love, just lost half our audience. Love the show. Uh, that's certainly, you know, just as a little thing you can do for anybody that's got a business page or... Uh, needs some uh, love from the Facebook algorithms or any algorithm for that fact, um, doing the, lo the love button and the commenting uh, always helps a little bit more. So just move that mouse over, just one one thing over. That's it. From, That's from it. the thumbs up to the, from, yes. to the love button. Yes. Right. So you win that gift card Ben told you about by commenting. Uh, smash that love button. That's right. And if you happen to win, when... Uh, our wonderful producer, Chris Stone from Cast Ahead Productions, who is a rock star producer of podcasts. Um, when he hits the prize later at the end, you get in to the prize later by commenting. I think I think that's the section of the show where Chris needs to, to join the show from the back end. You know, that would he, be good. He presses I'd the prize later. I'd be perfectly on fine screen. with that. Maybe Chris isn't ready today. I don't know. That, but... Uh, uh, but I think that's that's a perfect opportunity for he exists. Yeah, he, he exists. He does. he does. He does. Yeah, he's not just like somebody. We're, <laughs> he's not just somebody we're talking about as though it's just oh yeah, it's this person. He's a real person. He's a very real person. <laughs> he's a very real person. So, uh, so you were saying that you found. Well, I don't want to. Are you sure you want to talk uh, about this? Yeah, I mean, I'm cool with it. Um, now say why you reveal some big secrets here. Say so why remember I had a secret like two months ago. That's right, and secret. <laughs> so I did I did some holiday shopping, uh, some Christmas shopping over the weekend, and I, I kind of found, uh, you know, one stop shop is 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 not necessarily true because I did shop multiple and places. But up in Lidditz, there's a place called Artisan Mill. I think it's been around for a couple years. It's all under one roof, three floors, but inside are all local artisans, craftsmen. Um, you know, so like think jewelry, candles, soaps. So like it's a maker's market. Maker's market under one roof. Uh, again, three floors, all kinds of cool stuff. All stuff that my wife appreciates, right? Because she likes, she likes. It could also be said Etsy in person. That, that, that would be, that would be perfect. This is, Artisan Mill is definitely. I told you Etsy folks, the battle on Main Street, right? And, and it's one checkout. So you, you shop all, I mean, there's, there's probably 30, 40, 50, I don't know, uh, craftsmen, artisans, you know, boutique shops in there. And it's all one checkout. So you just shop, fill your cart, and then oh, check out one nice. time. So you don't have to like check out here and check out there. Right, and that's and nice. nobody's necessarily manning the booths or anything like that. It's like all of their stuff is there. So actually, you know, we had Jen uh, from Gifts That Give Hope on the show last week. And I mentioned her beeswax company, Chestnut Ridge Honey. She's got a little stand there. So nice. my wife appreciates all of the, you know, she appreciates local gifts and handmade gifts and this place is perfect. So holiday shopping at Artisan Mill is a good thing if you're a dude like me who sometimes struggles to find the right gift for their wife. Artisan Mill is a great place. I also did some shopping downtown in Lidditz because it's, you know, Artisan Mill, just a short little mile or half a mile drive from, from downtown Lidditz. Of course, there's a record shop in Lidditz. I, I, I did make a stop there, did some holiday shopping at the record store, at least. That's Holiday what, shopping that's for what yourself? I told myself. Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and others. There we go, Justin. You know, Justin was on the show, for Justin from Men of Iron. He was on the show about a month ago. Justin is messaging from Cancun. We're international. We are international. We've got our first awesome. international commenter. Thanks, Justin. Thanks for watching. But uh, anyway, did, did a lot of local shopping. I think 
this year more than ever, maybe before, at least in, in, in the age of buying stuff online, out Amazoning Amazon, there were a ton of people shopping oh, downtown Linnets and Artisan Mill was packed. And uh, that's good to see um, people shopping and spending money locally. And I think more than ever this year, like with shipping delays and, you know, stuff not in stock and who knows what, like if you haven't gotten your gifts now, you're not getting them online. Right. I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're coming against it like Maybe a week not. and a half. So Maybe shop not. local artisan mills, great place to shop. That's right. So, well, there you go. Yep. Yep. We just did like, uh, a lot of free promotion for artisan mill. That's all right. Yeah. That's that's what Lancaster Maybe connects can, is about. Bringing bring them bring on, bringing the best out of, of uh, Lancaster. That's right. What's so, this weekend? So while he was shopping, I was in the woods. I did something I haven't done for years and years. I swore I would never do it again. <laughs> I uh, took my son's deer hunting uh, for the first time, uh, which you know is like pretty much Pennsylvania tradition. Yep. Yep. Um, you remember. get you get two or three weekends a year, depending on the, how the calendar falls. And, this year we got three, mm-hmm. uh, but we went for the first time on the last day because it just how it fit in the schedule. Oh, Saturday was the last day. <laughs> Saturday was the last day. Yep. Yeah. I mean, unless you want to be a poacher, but I'm not advocating that. <laughs> uh, follow the rules, folks. But uh, but yeah, we went out. It was fun. My first foray into deer hunting was years ago when I used to go duck hunting with my friends, which I really liked. And because um, I was in the fall and it was warmer. And it just was easier. And there we are. And uh, so like 25 years ago, I went out, froze my butt off, bought all the gear and said, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> this year, way you said never again. Yeah, this year was uh, was a little different. Had my boys with me. So we enjoyed it. That's awesome. We didn't see anything. We didn't even see a squirrel. Uh, but we got some father and son time. And we had some good talk and uh, about a four miles of hiking. Uh, That's awesome. Round trip up and down uh, about 300 feet of elevation in that four miles. So it was, uh, it was quite the traverse for the old dad. It looked so, foggy. Was it, was it like foggy all morning? Yeah, it was foggy, cold, yeah. rainy. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, a good time uh, was had by all. That's right. That's right. So uh, a, a bad weather day in the woods is a good day. It's still a good day. Is that how it can No, be? that's a terrible thing. Oh. I mean, if it's, if it's freezing and it's like zero, it's <laughs> freezing and zero. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, we time got with the boys and yeah. time away from yeah, I mean, busyness. You, you can still enjoy the time with your family and hate the weather. <laughs> like it's perfectly oh, okay. Gotcha. To, the two, the two can exist. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. yeah. So. Oh, cool. Glad you got that time away. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, and then this duo is going to be back in the store on Saturday together. That's right. That's right. For old time's sake. For old time's sake. Should yeah. we should we mention where our team members are? If you want, they're they're Turks in, and Caicos. In the ocean. They're in Turks and Caicos, <sighs> underneath a palm tree. Come work at Gardeners. You get to go to Turks and Caicos. That's right. Uh, where else did they go? Uh, have they gone? Drew went to the Maldives. Maldives. Last year. That's what like. Yeah, you know, quarter traversed the globe three times and got yeah, there. You're there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yep. He's sending so, us photos. I don't. I don't think we'll let him go on vacation again. Sorry, Drew. Meanwhile, my my time is walking into the woods cold. Yep. Anyhow. Yeah. Good for them, though. Yes, we're happy. We're happy that they uh, get that time off and uh, that they can go. So, if you like what we're throwing down here on Lancaster Connects, you can watch it here where you're watching it. That might be on Facebook. That might be on YouTube. It might be on my channel. It might be on Ben's channel. Facebook. It might be on the Gardener's version of those channels. It might be, I agree, Jackie. Uh, we should uh, Gardner's, make a Gardner's <laughs> trip. Can you imagine? Turks and Caicos <laughs> trip. Yep. I like that. <laughs> but uh, you might be watching uh, any one of those channels. We're kind of everywhere and we're international. And uh, yeah, I agree. Take this show on the road. So we love it. When you listen and you can catch this as a podcast, just search Lancaster Connects in your favorite podcast player and you'll find us there. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we doing some community announcements? Well, if you want. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean it's, you know, it's next on the it's next on the thing. Next on the list. <laughs> You're looking for some good lights. So we've mentioned the uh, what do they call it? The Christmas Christmas Spirit Light Show. Spirit Light Show. 
So that's cool. Drive through Clipper Magazine Stadium. They always have fun uh, holiday themed events there. Uh, my family, Friday uh, night, I think we went out. The Conestoga Valley Middle School program, technology education program. So this is the middle school and actually high school students put together a light show. And you can you drive your car up. It's a donation thing. So it's, it's, it's you know, just give them whatever you want to give them at, on, the, on the way out. But um, you pull up. They do shows. I like, every, I like how you have to explain what a donation is to our viewers. Yes. Just, just with your hands, in case you didn't know. just in case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> so you pull up every half an hour. They do uh, a t- like a 20, 25 minute show. It's six songs. So these kids, they programmed, they have a light display in the parking lot. You sit there in your car and, and watch them. Um, they've got the music, six songs. They've got it set up to lights. You know, lights do the thing with the music. Uh, all programmed by students, put on by students. There are students like running, um, you know, the traffic control and stuff like that and collecting the donations. So really cool thing. Um, out uh, off of well, like Route 30 out there. Um, you know, in the Conestoga Valley. In the Valley. Conestoga Valley area. Area of Route School 30. complex, yeah. But really cool thing. So if you're looking for a holiday light show, that would be a good one to support. Very good. And we've got still, this is the last week for Toys for Tots. So a wonderful charity. Many businesses locally participate in that. Uh, I believe we discovered last week it was the 18th, which would make perfect sense. That's the Saturday. Uh, that's this coming Saturday when Ben and I will be here in the store. So uh, we're not a Toys for Tots drop off. Maybe we should be next year. But there's a fine list here right on your screen. We've got the link on your screen so you can reference it later. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're out there shopping and you feel so inclined to grab an extra toy or two or more, uh, grab them and uh, put it in the collection bins. And the Marines will do a fine job, as Marines do, of getting the toys to the tots. So that ends the 18th. The list of drop-off sites is there on the uh, screen. We've got a guest today. We did good. I guess we did good. That was a good time. We do have our guest. Oh, we always have a guest. <laughs> Hi, Lena. Welcome back. Hi there. How are you? Thank you. So Lena was on episode one of Lancaster Connects. I sure am. Yeah. And we are back because what Lena does with Off the Streets, helping people get out of homeless situations and into a home and have a secure roof over the head is just wonderful work. And uh, we felt it was worthy, especially this time of year as it gets colder, to highlight, uh, not that there's not a need for housing year-round, but uh, certainly a little bit more of a focus maybe this time of year. Uh, Thought it was good to bring you back on. Oh, well, I'm delighted to be back on. So I want to backtrack on something you just said as you introduced me, though, that I'm here representing uh, over 50 volunteers. Uh, That number changes from time to time as community volunteers from businesses like yours come to join us. And uh, and over 300 supporters who support us with time, with money, and donations of furnishings. So I'm here as one person, but I represent many. And uh, I just want to make sure the community realizes that because this is truly a, a village effort, you know, of, of all of us coming together to do something to help our local community. Yeah. Well, that's great. And thank you for that graciousness. Um, you're my favorite volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> great job. <laughs> so, Lena, you, you handle uh, some of the outreach efforts there at Off the Streets. I'm sure there's maybe some others that do the same, but uh, you're here with mm-hmm. us today as, as part of the outreach effort. So, um, we're going to bring you back on here in a couple minutes after we pay some bills, but for those that, that want to jump in, you can go to off lancaster.offthestreetsnow.com and check out what they've got while we pay the bills. Lena, we'll uh, be back with you momentarily. Very good. I'll be waiting. Okay. All right. <laughs> so again, we do the prizes on the show. Comment. We've got a couple comments. You've seen those come in. Um, for our podcast listeners, this is a reason for you to watch the show live. You can... Uh, Place your comment and be entered to win $25 gift card. 25 local bucks restaurant. Is 25 bucks. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> oh my goodness. You need to go. You did. Oh, you didn't do your homework. 
I didn't. Are you prepared? I'm prepared. Okay, go. I'm not prepared. I'm Shame good, on me. I'm a good student. I do the review portion of the pay and the bills. We had a customer drive from my hometown of Boyertown. Shout out Boyertown. Shout out mom and dad. Watching from Boyertown. Go Bears. Greg from Boyertown was interested in a an organic mattress, a natural mattress, mattress made without chemicals and foams. So he and his wife visited gardeners to get educated on buying an organic mattress. They were extremely professional, knowledgeable, and able to assist us in choosing the very best mattress for us. We were very pleased with our experience and would recommend them to anyone looking for a new mattress. So uh, we carry mattresses of all kinds here. Uh, number beds, adjustable beds, two-sided flippable beds. But one of the things we are really well known for is our selection of natural mattresses. So mattresses, again, made without uh, foams, polyurethane foams, and chemicals. Um, we have likely the largest selection of those products within a couple state region, maybe a few state region. I would say so. Um, yep. Probably 75 or 100 miles. Well, and I can say that because I used to sell things to stores, that's right. and that's how I got to know you, and I, so I know the stores. Look, I know, look at, what's, look at, look I know what's making it happen in the background. So there's, there. there's the Natural Mattresses uh, page that we have there. We have a handful of brands. Uh, these are brands you may not have ever heard of before because they only specialize in making this type of mattress. So foam rubber latex made from the sap of a rubber tree. We have other mattresses with materials uh, like wool and cotton. Um, some have organic certifications behind those materials. So uh, we, we frequently get people traveling. You know, Boyertown's about an hour away. We get folks from Harrisburg and beyond, Baltimore, Philadelphia area, uh, really all over driving to gardeners. Uh, to shop for natural products. So I'm going to I'm going to belabor the point just a little bit but add a little bit of color commentary to your yeah, testimonial yeah, yeah, yeah. for Mr. And Mrs. Levengood. So I actually helped deliver their mattress with my That's son right. Ethan because you know uh, kudos to our state troopers they keep the roads safe and keep us safe. But they can be a little consternating at times with their DOT, departmental duties and oversights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had a little eye that wasn't dotted one day on our delivery truck and it got pulled over. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so the gardener's team sprang into action and uh, I went and unloaded the Loving Goods mattress into my truck with my kid. Mm -hmm. And we went and delivered the mattress to Boratown. So I've been there. That's in Boratown. Yep. It's a wonderful place. It is. a yep, wonderful place. <laughs> Thanks for being the Chris Collinsworth to my Joe Buck. Sure. <laughs> I don't like you. I mean, I think. You know, I don't know if they're actually the as team. A, as an Eagles hey, fan. As Aikman, an Eagles fan. Aikman did my you, Joe Buck. You just did worse. <laughs> I know. As an Eagles fan, you, you called me the Cowboys guy <laughs> twice. <laughs> Hey, terrible. That's what I'm here for. Just terrible. Anyway, sleep better tip. We'll get into it because we don't want to like you know, turn everybody off. So from page 49 of our sleep better book, we just had a whole truckload of them come in with updates to them. But on this current version, so we always look to understand how what we offer fits your need. And sometimes if you just have a better understanding of where you're struggling with your sleep needs, you can improve it. I'm just going to read the things that we challenge you to think about sleeping, and then you can request the book by going to gardenersmattressandmore.com forward slash sleep dash better, and you can uh, take the quiz yourself. But the first question, simply ask how you've been sleeping. Do you get the necessary six to up to nine hours at night? Uh, are you following a routine? Do you watch TV or just go to sleep? Are you on your computer or cell phone? before going to sleep, you check your phone in the middle of the night. Do you eat before going to sleep? Does the person I sleep with snore or toss and turn? Do I need to make my bedroom more conducive to sleep? Do I need blackout curtains? Is it time to consider a new mattress? Do you need help choosing that mattress? So 12 pointed questions. You can uh, take the test and uh, see what your score is. And you'll do that when you go to gardenersmattressandmore.com forward slash sleep dash better. We'll mail you a free copy of the book right here. Mail you a fresh copy out. And then uh, you can check that out. Take some of the tips, put it in your sleep routine and wake up happy. 
Paul, yeah, the chief, the uh, Chiefs Paul I, I, I concur. I like the Chiefs. They're fun to watch, and they got Big Red as their coach, uh, who I actually got to sit with on an airplane years ago. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Out to Las Vegas, and uh, it was uh, fun was had by all. It was actually um, the uh, week before Super Bowl in 2004 when they were out of the Super Bowl. Mm. So it's kind of sad that Big Red was across the aisle. Gotcha. Because he wasn't going to play in the game. Mm. So anyway. Cool story. That's that. Go Chiefs. Uh, I agree. Let's bring Lena back on. Lena, are you a Chiefs fan? Uh, I'm not a football fan. <laughs> I'm for all... If, if I'm for any team that you guys are for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't understand the game. <laughs> uh, so let's kick it off here. Uh, so share with us the how and why of how and why off the streets began. That's a really easy question because all of us know that homelessness is an issue, right? So um, uh, it, it's one that is so huge that it it can be paralyzing. You know, you don't know where to start. And so I give really great, great credit to Deacon Mike Oles and, um, and to Off the Streets because what they do is help one person at a time. So they're just zeroing in on helping one person, one family at a time. And that's why they're so successful because you're not trying to solve the whole puzzle. And if you take a look at our logo, you see um, that it's made up of pieces of a puzzle. And it's what I said in the beginning, that it's a combination. It's a village of people who give time, who give money and who give furnishings. And um, and it's also represents the many facets of our community trying to help those who are experiencing homelessness. And Lancaster is, oh, yeah, Lancaster is blessed with so many uh, great agencies and and supporters like the Lancaster County Community Foundation. We just came through that extra give, and you saw that we raised over fourteen million dollars. I mean, that's, that's really that's, incredible. That, that's incredible. And then, I mean, just to have that support and that that vehicle that allows nonprofits to uh, benefit from the the. Uh, the charitable donations of many who don't know where to start. You know, you may want to help, but you don't know what to do. Um, and then there's tenfold. With, with uh, that's a combination of L Hop, the old L Hop, and Tabor, and um, they came together. Cap does a great job. I mean, there's just so many wonderful uh, people and and agencies trying to help this. But off the streets in 2013. Um, started a chapter here of something that had been started back in Connecticut in 2010. Um, And in 2013, uh, a group came together and said, we can do this here as well. And so gathered some volunteers, um, had some fundraisers and and got some donations uh, to help pay security deposits. And the whole idea was help people, give people a hand up uh, not a handout, but a hand up so they can pay a security deposit and get off the streets or out of a shelter and into a place of their own. And then we realized, well, they need furniture, right? You, to make this a home, you need furniture. And um, and so we supply gently used or sometimes new furniture, uh, everything from beds to desks, uh, microwave uh, tables. Um, and then we supply beddings. Um, and everything from to cleaning cleaning supplies um, and uh, the dishes you eat on silverware. So it's everything you need to make your home cozy and comfortable, as as one of our uh, clients told us. Um, we love that word cozy when she uses it. But um, uh, so we what we're doing there is not just taking people off the streets and putting them in ho- and and helping them into homes, but we're also helping to dignify them right um to so sleeping in an empty house with on the floor where we often find people before you know when we move the furniture in so every saturday we move uh two families we you know we uh, a group of people come together and that can be a business 
coming together and providing seven volunteers for us to to um, move a family, or it can be just four. I mean, it, it's whatever. And you can come once, or you can come always. Um, so uh, uh, it, it's really an opportunity uh, on Saturdays for people to come together and physically help us. So what I would say to anybody listening out there, if you are an individual or a business and you would like to help um, on, a, on a Saturday, it takes, it's from 9 to 11, basically. And it's... Um, uh, we work from Burl uh, Industries Business Park on New on New Holland, and uh, and and again, it's from nine to eleven. You and you can come and help once, or you can come and help uh, many times. And and we find that once you've done a move, you're you're going to want <laughs> you're going to want to come back. You know, so um, a, a very easy way to do it. And you can contact um, OTS Volunteers at gmail.com. Um, if you're interested in volunteering, um, you'll get a welcome letter and all the, the know-how on how to do it. Um, there's a place for everybody at Off the Streets. Lena, um, how big of a problem is homelessness in Lancaster? Lancaster well, it's, it's a problem, as it is um, everywhere. And it's one that the pandemic, unfortunately, hasn't helped. So there are 422 uh individuals who we've counted as uh, experiencing homelessness in Lancaster. Um, and it's not just city. Uh, it, this is countywide. Um, and I, we have found, we have found that uh, 80 to 84 percent of those we help are women and children. So they're coming from, uh, you know, uh, domestic violence, uh, Tenfold does a lot of referral because all of the folks we move must come from a referral from a local social agency. That you know, that way we know that they're screened and that they're able to continue to pay a rent. Okay, right. so we know right. that that it's good stewardship um, that we're spending the donation monies wisely and that it will help somebody um, more concretely. So, uh, and and over half of those that we help are children. So think about that. So yep. I have a I have a statistic here um, that uh, that might help, uh, but it's it, it's unfortunate. In 2020, there were over 2,200 students in the county who were counted as homeless. 2,200. You know, 2,200. Yeah. That's three yeah, percent. Three percent of the student uh, population that we're experiencing homelessness. Now we might not see that, you know, we might see it as a city problem, right? Um, but it is not, it is in Manham Township School District, it's in Hempfield School District, Elizabethtown, it's everywhere. And uh, so it's a countywide problem. Yeah, so I mean, not to, not to depress or uh, upset our listeners and watchers, but you know, as you're, as you're thinking of uh, how hard your day is, um, likely you're more blessed than others and um, maybe consider uh, what you have as good and how you might give back. And again, it doesn't need to be money. It can be time and, and you can go to uh, email OTS, that stands for off the streets, OTS volunteers at gmail.com and you can uh, help out on a Saturday morning. And I guarantee you, when you give into this world, the world does give back. So if you have some rooms in your house that don't have all the furniture in, as Lena said, it's not very dignified to live in a home with nothing. Uh, but if you are blessed to have a stable roof over your head, uh, have a bed to sleep in, you know, a living room to sit in, uh, but don't quite have everything you want, maybe, maybe do give, give in to get back, right? And uh, I firmly believe that. That's why we do this show, uh, to support the community that supports us. And we have great folks like Lena join us. By the time these folks get to us, they have been through so many forms, have had to fill out so many forms to talk to so many people, right, to qualify for help. And so when they come to us, we know that the social worker who has referred them has all the information to, uh, about the, this family or this individual. So we don't ask again. You know, we, there's no need to ask again. And uh, and. Obviously, it's something that is very much appreciated. Um, 
And and the other thing that I would want to say is that um, while we care a lot, we help everybody regardless regardless of religion of of uh, nationality. Um, it it just doesn't matter. Oh, if you are homeless and you have the ability to pay rent, and somebody and a social service says that you are ready and and refers you, we will help you. Um, there is no further screening to help. And uh, Jeff, you said it so well. Um, I think that's why we have volunteers who, are, who have been with us for 13 years. It's because once you help and you experience that feeling of um, actually doing something concrete on, a, on in two hours to make somebody's life better, you're going to come back, you know, and people do come back repeatedly and nowhere. I think, I think both of you probably can, can say that you have experienced the same, but um, during the pandemic, I mean, didn't you say to yourself so many times how lucky you are? How lucky were we to have a home, uh, to have a, a backyard that you could walk out to yeah. when we were locked in? Those early months when we didn't know what was happening, imagine being homeless. Yeah, yeah. You know, wow. um, where there aren't enough beds and there were no places uh, to go during the day but outside. Now there is a day shelter. Yeah. Um, and so there's so many good things that came out of COVID as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think something else that, you know, anybody watching uh, needs to understand or maybe appreciate is that, that for a lot of folks, the hardest part of any journey in life is the start. You know, it, if you're going to start a business, it's, it's starting it. It's, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna find somebody to do life with in a marriage or partnership, it's finding that right person, right? Um, in this case, how you help is, um, I mean, we all know the cost of housing has gone up. You know, taxes go up, so that all yeah, everything is up right now, especially now. Um, but uh, you know, securing that rent and that first month's rent and that security deposit, it is the hardest part for some people, right? Like mm -hmm. it is the hardest, yeah. single hardest part. Mm -hmm. It's not that they can, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can afford the, the monthly rent, but they just need that little, that little kick, that little jump start mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to get rolling. And right. um, so again, right. I mean, if, if you're listening and you can help, whether that's to donate money, uh, donate items or donate time, it's just so appreciated. And you saw an example of, uh, of one of, one of the families. Um, talk us through some other examples of, I know, I know for confidentiality reasons, you can't really right. show other pictures, maybe other than, uh, Jessica, was it Jessica there on the video? That was, yeah, her that was Jessica. Yeah. yeah. Jessica. So obviously she, she gave permission, mm -hmm. but, uh, share some other success stories, uh, if you don't um, mind. Yeah. Well, first I want to say that, that we help with no expectation of anything, the furniture that we get. And, I th if there are any volunteers watching, I mean, they they certainly could affirm what I'm going to say. People do not give us junk. We get we we won't accept junk, yeah, either because again, we want to dignify the person that we're helping. But you should see what people donate. Um, so we have a um, we have friends who listen uh, online and on Facebook and hear what our needs are and respond with brand new sheets. You know, brand new towels. Um, we have a volunteer that supplies all our new pillows. Um, so here in this picture, this is a really great example. This is a young single man. Everything you see in this picture was donated. And it's beautiful, right? I mean, yeah. and that, that quilt like you home. see, the quilt, right. And the quilt you see on the, on the chair, that, that, that's one of so many quilts that were made by the Red Rose Guild. Yeah. Uh, for off the streets to give to our to our uh, recipients, and uh, when we go on a move, we may actually make the beds because we're not just giving something; we're doing something. You know, um, the, a lot of these folks haven't had anybody to do something for them, and so we make their bed. Um, cribs. We have we have a uh, we call it the Mary's Fund, where we. Uh, get fun, uh, funds to buy brand new cribs and brand new bed rails and brand new bunk beds. 
so that the things that we give, we know are safe and we have all the parts for it. So we do this, we do this no matter if it's rain or shine, as you can see in this snow covered picture. Jeff? Yeah, Lena, if, if uh, some of our listeners and, and watchers have items that they'd like to donate, what is the best way for them to get those items to you? Okay, the, the best way is first to call and leave a message at 717-723-8084. So call, leave a message, and then somebody will call you back. Most likely in terms of donations, it's going to be Pat Lachlan, who um, is very thoughtful and very good at what he does. And he will call you and let you know whether we can use your item or not, because it's feast or famine. Either we have many, many mattresses, or like right now, we're down to 10 twin mattresses. So we, 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 um, we go through things fairly quickly, but we never know because from week to week, we do not know who the person is that we will be helping. So, and if, if somebody has something that you can use uh, and pass along, uh, will you go pick it up from them or do you have a, a yes. drop-off location? Yes. So the process is that they call this number and then they will, um, somebody will call them back. And again, we're all volunteers. And so it, it might take a day or two to get back. Um, and then they'll make arrangements if, if the items are things that we need and that they are in good condition nor, and with no stains or tears, uh, no excessive wear, um, then they'll make arrangements to come and pick them up. If it's smaller items, then they can bring them to the warehouse. Usually somebody is there between 9.30 and 11 at our warehouse. Um, and again, they just call the number or go on Facebook and leave a message and somebody will get back to them to make arrangements. It's very easy to do. And um, and if you go if you go on Facebook, we can also tell you where to go, where there is a bin where you can put some things. But that's a very limited thing. So we, we just do that off Facebook. Uh, Lena, do you, um, do you take uh, like small kitchen appliances, like crock pots yes. and things like that? Oh, we, we <laughs> value them, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, everybody wants a good cup of coffee, right? So coffee, a coffee maker. And we really do appreciate... If you would attach some some filters to that, just to get it get them started. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Nothing but like looking toasters, at a coffee maker you can't use. Toasters, um, crock pots, coffee makers, hand mixers, um, all of those things uh, that make life easier for us also makes life easier uh, for those experiencing homelessness. Remember that homelessness can happen to anyone, right? To anyone, and uh, and so many of those that we help have had nice homes before, have have known what it is to have a crock pot, you know, and make that meal. And so many of our moms are working, so a crock pot is <laughs> is a, is a real help. But yes, and microwaves, microwaves too. We do ask that everything be very clean, and be ready to give out, and uh, yeah. and that'll work. Right. Yeah, because you know, you you want your you want your donor hours of time to be focused on the actual move and yeah. setting things up and and not not so much right. cleaning up somebody else's mess. Right. Good. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. And also, we don't want to be asking all of our volunteers to do that either. But yeah. but <laughs> along those lines, lamps too. You know, yeah. uh, uh, electrical things like lamps. We don't take decor. You know, what, what we what we want to do is uh, furnish, comfortably furnish a home with the basic needs that people need. So yeah. you, you touched on it a couple of times. You help people who are vetted by various agencies mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the area or in mm -hmm. Lancaster. Um, does that equal a high success rate? I mean, people, when you get them into an apartment or a home where they're renting, they're staying in, I would imagine. Okay. Well, that, that's, you know, again, they are hooked up with social services. So they're being followed uh, by these social services. Oh, so okay. we step in, but we step out. We do okay. not, um, we do not continue to follow. Um, every once in a while, we'll get a phone call, you know, from somebody asking for, for some help. But usually, um, 
it's the social worker that they're dealing with who follows up. But we know that in 2016, that there was a survey done. This was before I became a volunteer and, and found that 90% of the people that we had helped were still in their homes. So that that's an excellent statistic. That's a great other, number. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other thing that we've found is that People want to give back. So Jeff and Ben, I think I might have mentioned this the last time I was on, but a lot of times we'll go on a move and the person we're helping will have something they want to share. So maybe it's baby a baby swing that they no longer need or baby clothes they no longer need and they want to share with others. You know, they want to give back. Sure. Um, and um, or they'll want to volunteer and actually come and help us on a move. We do have people off the street sometimes that will come and help us get something in the door. Um, and we've had we have somebody right now who's doing this, who on their own is choosing to pay back the money that we gave them for security deposit and pay that monthly, you know, mm. a small amount. But pay that and then we'll never forget any of the volunteers who saw the video will never forget the person who wanted to pay back seven hundred and fifty dollars to us. You could tell in that video how that she permitted um, how painful it was to part with that money. But it was something she wanted to do for her self-respect. And right. we did accept the money we did because that was important to her. But we managed to give some of it back. Yeah. But um, but and people who call us and say we're moving, uh, we're or we're going out of town. Um, do you need this furniture back? And we say no, it's your furniture. We just had that happen about two weeks ago, where and somebody actually just visibly was moved by that mm -hmm. that this furniture was theirs. It can't comes with no strings attached. Yeah, well, I hope I hope that you know people watching and listening. You know, I hope what you're picking up is that, you know, the, the, this could very well be your neighbor. It could be a high school friend, uh, somebody you know. And, you know, the quality of most everybody in our town, in our county, in our world, is that they do want to do good. They do want to self-sustain and, and, and lead their own life. But, you know, things happen. And it's great organizations like Off the Streets that can step in and, and again, give that little jump start, that little extra. They don't need to become wards of the state. They don't need to be entirely, you know, wholly self-reliant. Uh, they just need that hand up. And uh, I'm so glad you were on today because mm -hmm. I used the hand up example uh, earlier today talking with somebody else about uh, charitable efforts. And, I would, mm -hmm. and you were the one that told me about that. A hand up, not a hand out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, people might have also picked up. So you work with folks that have been maybe vetted isn't the right word. It's my word. So I apologize. Screened. Screened. People who have been screened. Yeah. So for those screened as, as though screened as someone or a family who can continue to pay that rent. Mm -hmm. So do you know, you know, what happens to folks that can't? I mean, it, they don't, I would imagine they don't get to your desk, so to say. Right. But can you speak yeah. to the network that's yeah. available for people like that? Just in case yeah. that's kind of a question for somebody yeah. listening. I, I would encourage you, um, ben, and, ben and Jeff, um, because you, you do have an interest um, to sometime have a representative of Tenfold on your show. Um, Tenfold has that connection with all and uh, the agencies and services like ours who um, impact on the issue of homelessness um, because there are so many and they're so spread all over the county. Um, but they they have that hand. So I, I, um, uh, I, I do have an idea and probably could answer that question somewhat, but not as fully as they can. Okay. But there are, in Lancaster, there are definitely uh, services available to those who get into trouble. Um, uh, they, can call, they can call and actually talk to a live person and, um, and get some help if they cannot pay the rent. By the way, with Off the Streets, um, we do, we will help some some people, again, who are referred, who need help paying their rent, 
if it's something that keeps them off the streets, right? We right. don't want, if we can help somebody stay off the streets. But during COVID, um, we had the stays in, um, you know, the moratoriums um, in evictions. And um, and so that that helped during that period uh, of time. But, um, but you know, there's another very sad statistic, and it's, it's one that I don't say to, um, to get anyone depressed, but it's, it's a reality, is that at a landlord meeting that I attended uh, recently that was um, sponsored by Tenfold and by um, uh, Lanco, my home, who deals with homelessness, um, they said that they were 20 homes available for every 100 people who needed a home. Now think about that, you know, but many landlords, you know, went through a very hard time during COVID, right? So they they sold some of them or got out of the rental business. Um, uh, so there, there is a lack of affordable housing in Lancaster County. It, it's a huge problem. And it's one that we really do have to to address. And I know that the powers that be are addressing it. it and like homelessness in general, it's such a huge issue. But, yeah. but it is one we have to take into account. Um, I went recently helping a friend, a new college graduate, try to find a home under $900 a month. It was tough. It was tough. So yeah. you can imagine what it would be for a family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that number is pretty jarring. You know, eight, mm -hmm. you know, four out of five families just mm -hmm. the simple math says there is nothing available. Yeah. So right. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have Lancaster City Alliance coming on at the turn of the mm -hmm. year uh, to talk about their patrols and their outreach efforts. So they kind of mm -hmm. get the ball started. Mm -hmm. Intermediary groups come in. I believe I've, I remember uh, like United Way is one of the companies or oh, one of the organizations. United, Kevin Ressler at United Way is a, would be a special guest. He's very yep. good. Yep. Alice Yoder from LGH, uh, another one. Yeah. Sam Bressy from Lancaster County Community Foundation. Yeah. I mean, these are people that, um, uh, that could really uh, – put you in touch with what's really happening in Lancaster. Yeah. So speaking of people, uh, our friend, uh, my dear friend, we've traveled the, the world together, honestly, Larry Soraka. He commented oh, just a minute Larry, ago. Yes. He's got an introduction to Tenfold. So I'll connect with Larry on that specifically. Okay. Uh, okay. But I want the watcher, and Larry's not going to like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, Larry got word that you were looking for three additional queen mattresses. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's he offered to make that donation. Um, so we're going to work that out and get those to you. Uh, we'll pull them from our stock here so we can get them to you quicker. And then, mm -hmm. uh, but, but that's a donation from Larry. And I want everybody to be mm -hmm. uh, aware of that. So well, is we'll, Larry is Larry on right now? Well, he's watching he from he he's watching, watching from one, wherever he might be today. Okay, yeah. well, I'd like I have a message for Larry. Uh, so, Larry, thank you so much. You are such a good friend. On the night of the extra give, Larry messaged off the streets and said, "How can I help? I I can I can donate mattress pads, mattress covers, new ones, and sheet sets." And then he sent, he came back and he said, oh, I saw that you need twin and full uh, uh, queen sheet sets. And these are all beautiful, brand new. And he kept his word and, um, and we had them in the warehouse the following week, you know. So imagine, imagine giving somebody who had nothing but a blow up bed, if anything, to sleep on. And then we're giving them a fresh mattress pad with a new pillow and a new sheets. I mean, yep. what a blessing. Now that doesn't mean we don't want gently used sheets because we go through an awful lot of them, but Larry, um, we thank you so much for your generosity. And it really did our hearts good just to know that there's somebody in the game with us, you know, it's just always so affirming. So yep. thank you. Yep. Well, Larry's Larry, a good dude. Larry is a good dude. I know and Larry sure. is with. He's the president of Sleep, uh, Sleep Great Length, uh, Sleep Great Now. Yep. I think I have that right. That's right. Yeah. That is right. That is right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I've known Larry for uh, twenty plus years. Uh, I've seen Larry's tenacity, fight 
And the, he just does not give up when he sees something he believes in, knows it will help people, whether that's in business or in giving, uh, he's there. So it's awesome mm-hmm. that he uh, got turned on to off the streets. And 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 so we're glad we're and all we friends. Have, yeah, we, we have the same reaction to you and Ben, uh, Jeff, because yeah. um, because we know you're there. And if we need we, we know we can come and ask. We, we don't always expect to get a yes, but it's nice to know that we can ask. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's so you can, you may always mm-hmm. ask and mm-hmm. uh, I will always, we will always do what we can to fulfill. So, mm-hmm. yep. Lena, you had um, uh, some slides that I think you might have wanted to talk yeah. through. Um, yeah, oh, right. I can do that. Um, mm-hmm. Chris can bring them up. There you go. Go ahead. Yeah, but they, yeah. So this is something that that might help somewhat. Um, so who we helped in 2020 since 2013? We, uh, this is a rough figure. We've helped about 3,300 people off the street, and uh, and unfortunately, half of them are children. You know, so and we're very conscious of the children, especially because what if they they have gone through on top of being homeless? Look what they've gone through um, with no school. And that was a safety net for many. Mm-hmm. So we've helped we, in 2020. We helped. Now this is during the heat of COVID. We helped 409 people who were referred by social agencies. Um, 249 people received some help with security deposit, and then some emergency housing assistance. And that that would be the rentals rental help, which we don't usually do. But again, we do it as needed. Um, we wrote out checks for ninety four nine hundred thirty five dollars. We spend um, between eight and ten thousand dollars a month in security deposits. So you can see why donations are so terribly important. Yeah. And um, and then one hundred sixty people receive furniture and household goods. And I've already covered that. But if it you know these donations come from so many people, people like Larry and yourselves, but then also from little children. Um, there's a, a little girl, I believe she was four or five. Um, I wish I could show her picture because she's so dear. But she followed the example of her parents who's, who help, help gave a cup of coffee to somebody on the street. And she saw that and it stayed in her heart. Her heart. And um, and so she collects cleaning supplies and puts them in a bucket and brings them over. Oh, wow. you That's know? Nice. So it's all those things means so much yep. to the people that are getting them, but that also means so much to those of us who are working so hard um, to help uh, those who need it. Yeah. Uh, I did the math there on my phone as you were talking. I took mm-hmm. 94935 divided by 249, mm-hmm. rounding up that equals about $382 a person. Yeah. Now, yeah. $382 is a lot of money. You know, mm-hmm. for some people that's that's might be the extra they have at the end of the month. Uh, but if that's extra for you listening and watching, uh, that's what it takes to help a person with get off the streets, 382 bucks as an average. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with, with $382, yeah, that, yeah. Go, that goes mm-hmm. pretty far uh, mm-hmm. to helping out your local community members. Yeah, there's another graphic that you'll see here and, and here's why it goes far. Um, with using only volunteers, we have no office. We do have a warehouse and a van that was donated. Um, but 97% of your dollar, your hard earned dollar, um, goes directly to helping, uh, the, those experiencing homeless. Um, that's an incredible so number. That's an incredible number. And it's do- and it's another credit to our volunteers who absorb many of the costs of extras, you know, that we may not have. Uh, on the way to a move, we might not have a toaster and they'll stop in and get in a toaster. Yeah. But um, we we are, I, I cannot tell you, and especially I'm so happy that at Christmas, and that's why I'm wearing red, by the way, at Christmas time, because I wanted just to have this opportunity to say to our community how grateful we are for the donations that you make, um, because what you do enable our volunteers who give of their time so that 97% of your dollar can make a difference, such a huge difference in somebody's life. And um, I'll just add and then let you continue on as we yeah. wrap well, up. So, so um, a lot of time, 
But, okay, but for ahead. people listening, that number of 97 cents of every dollar going to the effort is remarkable when you mm-hmm. consider there are some large national and international charities where it's only three cents of every dollar that makes it to the effort and 97 cents goes to other costs. So right. Lena, uh, everybody involved at Off the Streets is a fantastic steward of every dollar you give. Um, that is an incredible, remarkable number. So congratulations mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So um, many of those who have donated uh, might have had something rejected because it was too big or too heavy. And the reason is, as you can see, we're looking down on some volunteers trying to figure out how to bring that love seat up Mm -hmm. because so many of the homes are on second and third floors and we're using fire escapes. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it was a fire escape. Um, And so we have to be very careful of of getting the right size furniture that can not only just fit in the rooms and the stairways, but that can fit through, you know, the, the, the fire escape. So here's a team to make a good move. We really need about seven people, seven or eight people. And there's our van again, donated, uh, van. And we have many churches that will come and help on a Saturday. Here's one of those fire escapes. Yep. And then I wanted to show you a finished room again. So isn't this lovely? I mean, well, I said and, earlier, and the, it, looks like, it looks like home, right? It's, yeah, it's where yeah. somebody can, can come home at the end of the day, close the door mm-hmm. and find peace and comfort right. and be comfortable. And this was a single gentleman who appreciated the wood, good wood furniture because he was, had been a carpenter, mm-hmm. but it was now disabled and he had just lost his partner. Mm-hmm. So having a new home like this was really, um, really comforting to him. And here's somebody working. We are in, we are located in Burl Industries and Business Park. Um, so we're in there loading the vans and loading pickups on Saturdays. If you have a pickup and can help sometimes on a Saturday, <clears throat> it really will cut down our time, the time spent mm-hmm. on a Saturday. Yeah. There, there it is. Bad. The van's full. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Another team. We have we have people like Hearts Physical Therapy have come as a group. Um, Lupier has come as a group. There have been uh, uh, Civitas has come as a group. So um, we really so appreciate the businesses uh, who come and give us some manpower on a Saturday. Yep. And there you can see the small appliances loaded, ready to go. Now we don't do we don't do curtains usually because not everybody has uh, has rods and thing the hardware. But in this case, they did, and so we were able to put up drapes. Yeah, yeah, very good. And this this is a fun. That little girl in red, <laughs> woman in red, is a dynamo. She's one of our truck captains. Drives the van, and that and this dresser you see on the right, we couldn't put the drawers back in, but she she kept doing it you can see the um you can see the uh foam the blow-up mattress. mattress that they, yep. they they had in the back I'd, I'd like to just stay here for just a moment to tell you a story on this one because this is remarkable this couple lived in, on, on in the woods in a car for two years mm. oh wow for two years they saved every penny they uh paid their bills on time and uh, the lady kept telling me, we're not derelicts. We're, just because we, we were homeless doesn't mean we were derelicts. We paid our bills. And they bought this home. This home that we, they went from homelessness into a home that they bought. They had just settled on it two days before. And we fully furnished this two-bedroom home for them. Wow. And the gentleman has a heart condition and had been sleeping on cushions against the stairway because he can't lay down on a bed. So... Mm. The night before, we got a donation, a call about a donation of a a love seat love seat recliner. But uh, you know, we turned it down because it was it was too heavy, right? So um, so we turned it down, and then the very next day, we got the call asking if we had a love seat recliner for this gentleman. So um, would you believe that that same day another one was donated? We picked it up and brought it in. And so um, 
Uh, things like that happen to us all the time where our, we have a need and the need is met. Yeah. It, it's just amazing. Here we're putting together a few ton. Yeah. Yep. Well, you do a lot of great work. Your, your volunteers help affect that work. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got uh, your coordinators and your peers that help as well. About 50 of you, you said. So that's all great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've gone over it. We can donate items. Uh, you can call 717-723-8084, discuss your donations. And, um, you know, uh, by calling that number, you'll get that coordinated. You can reach out to otsvolunteers at gmail.com about upcoming moves. Mm-hmm. Of course, you can donate money. And I'm, I'm guessing we have a donation tab on your website. Is that right? Yes, there yeah, absolutely Lancaster. is. Off and the there street. is one on Facebook too. Yep. Um, yep. So you can go to the website for our listeners mm-hmm. on podcast. It's lancaster.offthestreetsnow.com. Mm-hmm. And you can go there. And uh, of course, they can always use volunteers and, and money to help. Yeah. And right now, we do have a need for anyone watching who has um, a gently used mattress. Um, it can be old as long as it's it's still um, comfortable uh, and has no stains, uh, uh, but we and uh, and is in good condition. We need twin and full mattresses, mattress sets. So the um, the box springs and the mattresses, we could really use them. We're down to ten, okay. um, and and if we have two families a week, well, they can disappear next week. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Lena, we appreciate you being on the show. Mm -hmm. Um, Why don't we have uh, Chris? We're going to do our prizes. All right. So we do prizes on the show. Am I messing this up? I feel like I'm messing it up. I am messing it up. (laughs) (laughs) That was my cue to remind you watching that we do prizes on the show. So get that comment in for the last time. we do have some discontinued and floor model items to uh, to, to sell off. Um, so uh, there is a picture of some things that we have. So if you're looking for a good deal and you need something, you can come and check that selection of items out. Uh, Lena, to put a little fun, not that this hasn't been fun, <laughs> but we have our little connection cocktail, as we call it, as part of our time together. Um. Why don't you lead this off? Sure. So, uh, Lena, I, I don't know much of your backstory. Are you a Lancaster native? I am, I am not. You're not? I, okay. Uh, I'm from Venezuela. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, what? So, what is your favorite thing to do in Lancaster? Oh, my gosh. Favorite thing to do in like eat. <laughs> There's so oh, yeah. many incredible <laughs> restaurants. So many. Yeah. That's a good answer. I like, I like, I like Lena. Yep, I like Lena. <laughs> So you're from Venezuela. How long have you lived in Lancaster? 54 years. All right. I, mar- I married a Lancastrian countyan, <laughs> and um, and so came came after we married. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. So 54 years in Lancaster. So you might have a preference here: Turkey Hill, Sheets. Oh, or Wawa. don't go any further. Don't go any further. Turkey Hill. Turkey Hill. <laughs> All right. It is. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were the first here, right? Yep. And uh, I knew the owner. <laughs> that okay. that helps. Yeah. Yeah. And my God, I've been going to Turkey Hill every day, all the days of my life. <laughs> so so Sheets and Wawa are invaders into oh, the Turkey invaders. Hill. Theater. So you, they're, okay. they're absolutely right. invaders. Right. Yeah. And we won't even bring yeah. up runners. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> or Royal Farms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thanks for playing along. That uh-huh. I like okay. Yeah. Turkey, a Turkey Hill iced tea. That's that's something to behold. I had a roommate. <laughs> ice cream. I had a roommate once ice that cream, would drink like a whole gallon of Turkey Hill iced tea in a day. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> dangerous. It's just that's all I drank. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, if you want to be a guest on our show, um, if you are part of a charity, help to lead a charity, founded a charity, uh, we'd love to highlight you. Um, we have really four weeks upcoming of great charity guests through the seventeenth of January. Yeah. So at this point, we're booking, that would be January 24th and forward. Go to LancasterConnects.com forward slash guest and uh, fill out the form that's there. Very simple form just to get us started. We'll connect and get you on the show. 
All right. So that's LancasterConnects.com forward slash guest. You can watch this on YouTube, Facebook, on both the Gardeners and the Lancaster Connects channel. And the nice thing, you know, Lena will, you know, uh, the links that Chris, our producer, sent out, you know, you've now got a really great video to uh, share with others about mm-hmm. off the streets. Not that you don't have mm-hmm. nice, nice mm-hmm. video content assets, but that's the nice thing about charities and why I say we believe supporting the community that supports us because once we're done with our episode today, it's right there. You can share it out, put it on your mm-hmm. website, uh, send it to somebody that might be asking uh, to to have clarification on the mission that you complete. So um, mm-hmm. that's that's one nice byproduct of being a guest on the you know, show. You know, it, it, it really is. It, it, I, actually, it's on our Facebook page now. And if, if those watching want to, um, to see more of our stories, you can go to Off the Streets Now, Lancaster, PA, uh, on Facebook. And um, we post our stories um, about our moves and our needs. Sounds and that's great. how Larry found us. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's great. Well, L- L- wanna, Lena wanna... had some fans on the show who were commenters. Yep. They so count. I think she needs to stick around for our prize later. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, somebody who commented is going to win a twenty-five dollar gift certificate to Lancaster. Now, I maybe maybe some a of you Lancaster relatives. restaurant, Lancaster restaurant, not Lancaster like yeah, <laughs> That's right? The Lancaster, Lancaster restaurant. restaurant. Yep. So go ahead, Chris, hit the button. Oh, Gardeners and and Lancaster Connects can't win. Oh, there you go, Paul. <laughs> now, is, is Paul, Paul's your son? My Paul is the son that I'm visiting in Kansas City. That's right. That's yeah. right. So maybe he'll have to pass it along to you. I, I think he that's just allowed. Might have to, he I just might have allowed. to come visit. He well, just yeah, might have to come visit. Yes. I was just going to say, <laughs> no, no guilt, Paul, that you got to come visit mom in Lancaster. <laughs> Take mom out to eat in Lancaster. That's yeah. her favorite thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, he set me up with the the sound system and everything, so I do appreciate uh, the fact that he won. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. And Paul says he'd like to donate his, so we'll figure out a good way to use that uh, if that's that's what you'd like to do, Paul. Well, I'll just dial it or do it again. Just yeah. just run it again. <laughs> Should we run let it again, Chris? Win. Yeah, let somebody else. He'll, win. he'll probably win again. Yeah, that would be so fun. <laughs> Emily. Emily Palmer. All right, there, there we, we go. go. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, Emily, uh, you can stop by Gardner's Mattress some more, uh, 830 Plaza Boulevard here in Lancaster, right behind Park City Mall. Stop in, uh, let us know you're uh, one of the winners from the Lancaster Connects podcast of a uh, $25 gift card, and you'll have your choice of restaurants to pick out. Yeah. Lena, it was a pleasure. Uh, We will be in touch with you about the mattresses that Larry was so generous to donate. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure, we have a donation here for you. It was on our dock Friday. I don't know if it got picked up, but we have that here. I think it's still back there. Um, And then uh, I've got some kitchen items that I'm going to gather and get to you as well, um, personally. So, uh, so yeah. And um, we always donate to our, our charities, so we'll be doing that as well. Uh, we'll reach out to you, whether that's best for a uh, monetary donation or, as you mentioned, uh, maybe some mattresses. But we will connect okay. post-show and uh, and get that worked out. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And thank yeah, you, Jeff. Yep, and absolutely. thank you, Chris Stone, wherever you are. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Merry right. Christmas. Merry yeah, Christmas, yeah. Christmas to, to, you. to all of you. Yep. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you and all the people who help you. All right? Thank you. I'll that's this that episode. Yeah. That was a good one. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.